so Kalamationos, it's a uh, nice kind of folk dance in 7-8. Um, so don't get too intimidated by 7-8. Music like this works so well because the melody carries you through what to a lot of people is considered a weird time signature, 7-8, right? Um, a strong melody can carry us through any crazy time signature changes. Um, like many songs that you listen to, some sometimes I listen to a song and I don't even realise that there's been a time signature change or weird stuff going on until I analyse it or play it myself. So, yes, um, the melody can carry us through this. It doesn't, we don't have to be too worried about 7-8. I think the thing to to do is to emphasise beats 1, beat 4 and beat 6. And this is the kind of... the a lot of times this is the thing we do with seven eight. So this kind of idea of one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. And and for especially for a dance, this has to be rhythmical. Like it says in the in the tempo indication, rhythmically but not too fast. Um so I would basically accent beats one, beats four and six of nearly every bar. then suddenly you get to the end of the phrase and it doesn't sound like you've you, you've you've been in seven eight almost it it just flows through um and the melody carries you along you don't have to be counting in your head all the time going oh no there's not it's not the eighth quaver what am i going to do um you'll be okay <laughs> so um another thing about the, the the tempo indication i've listened to a few of these uh, kalamatianos uh on youtube um of Greek bands playing and, and people dancing, and it's faster. Um, I think this is a, a bit slower tempo than probably you would find um, normally, but that's good for this grade. I think um, there is a tendency to rush, and maybe this indication of not too fast is saying, watch it, don't rush, because with a dance like this, you don't really want to be rushing. Now, I think I probably did rush. I, th I think if I look back at the video, which I will do, I played the start slower than I played the end. Okay, so naughty me, but don't let that happen to you. Really try and keep a solid tempo. It is nice to, to let it breathe, and occasionally this speeding up is, is nice, but we have to be a bit in control of it. Um, so yeah, accent every one, four and six. I would even put a little mark above each, um, Especially in the first phrase, each 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 beat there one and four and six, just to kind of feel that. Um, now for a kind of bar by bar look through the piece. So bar one to four. Um, once you've written those accents in, um, I think the accents make. The slurs make sense. They give them meaning because we've got them coming off. They're all coming off of one of those accented beats. That's when slurs are really, really great, when they kind of emphasise the beat, um, you know, and not the, not the note you're slurring to. So really feel that grooving. It's so nice. It's got this cool feel to it. I love it. Um, I think, let's just, just, I'm playing this A and M, and then I, M, A on the second bar. I don't, th I think most people will want to play that M, I, but I would suggest if you're doing it M, I, M, I, M, A, take an A on the F sharp that's underneath the barret so that you can go I, M, I on the rest of bar two. Just be careful that you might run into problems with um, needing to repeat the I finger or something. So we don't really want to repeat a finger in a row here. Um, nor do we want to really bring the thumb up too much to play bass notes. So I wouldn't in bar two, for instance, play that third string with the thumb. And you might be tempted to. Having said that, in bar four, I think 
I play the whole arpeggio or E B E. I play that with my thumb. So um, sometimes you can, sometimes <laughs> don't. <laughs> um, there is a kind of a, a, a marking, uh, the, the apostrophe at the end of the the, the line. Um, I've chosen not to take any kind of breath there and pause just because I feel like we're playing a dance piece. We're playing a piece that needs to have this steady timing. Um, you could have a little pause there. Say for instance, and that's nice, kind of making that bar almost eight, eight, uh, four, four, right? Um, you could do that. I just, I feel like with the dance, we should keep it, keep it going, keep it going. Um, what you could do to, um, to um, uh, emphasize that um, end of the phrase marking that apostrophe is to immediately come down to mezzo piano on that last B on bar four. So, you know, really accent that change in volume. Still do those accents when it's mezzo piano as well. Okay, so just drop the, the thumb and the inner line so that we can we can still play mezzo piano but 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 project the uh um yeah i'm also playing this phrase say in bar six as if the d sharp in the accompaniment is a melody note um let's just try it without Maybe it works without, maybe I shouldn't be doing that, but oh, that's nice. Ah, oh, okay. There's a thing as well, actually. Maybe maybe I shouldn't have done that D sharp accented. Because that mirrors the the the, the, the phrase from bar one and two mir mirrors three and four. Just that actually don't don't accent the D sharp um, in bar two and bar three. Um, okay, moving on. Um, um, uh, let me just see if there's anything. Yeah, this is a bit of an awkward fingering here in bar four, say, and bar eight. I think the thing I'm doing is swinging my arm around to bring that chord in and then around for the E major chord so um, and again I'm preparing the barrier as well get that first finger ready um, okay next bit now this is interesting bar nine onwards I've chosen to only staccato the bass line. Um, originally I thought that's what the arrangement intends. Um, and then I'm thinking, mm, maybe it means the whole chord. But <laughs> I'm kind of, basically this is my protest <laughs> at musical scores. Really, like for, for me, unless I missed a memo somewhere, there should be staccato for, uh, uh, on each uh, line right on each on each musical line in the piece so the fact that there is a staccato say in bar 9 on the low E but not on the B I've got to I've got to read that as the bass note is staccato but the melody isn't maybe I'm wrong here maybe I, again maybe I missed the memo that one line being staccato means everything should but it shouldn't I really believe this and like if if it, this piece is intended to be um, like all, all, both lines staccato, the, the the treble and the bass. Like, then it should be in both parts. What staccato above the stave, staccato below the stave. So it's kind of my protest. But also, it, it sounds quite cool. And, and I say that's my protest. But listening to again a, a lot of these um, videos on YouTube with bands playing this, like you can hear this staccato bass whilst the melody is free flowing. So if you were to think of this in a band context. Um, you wouldn't necessarily want everything staccato, the whole chord staccato. And so I'm kind of taking this, 
imagine there's a bass player there. Just because your bass player is playing staccato doesn't mean you're the clarinetist does or, you know. Um, so, experiment. If you like the sound of only doing the bass staccato, it's hard. Arguably, it's a bit harder. I'm just punching the punching the thumb back in when I play the note. Um, if you like that, then do it. I don't think you'd be penalised at all if you uh, did that, or if you did the opposite, which is playing both lines staccato. I, I especially don't like it at the end though, like this um, going. I'm not sure, don't like it. So, there's that. Um, bar 10. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is tricky. You've got the fingering written in there, definitely do that. Uh, so I'm playing P, I, M, A, P, and then P and I, A, M, A, P, I, as it suggests. Um, Next chord, I'm playing P and I, and then taking M and A on the F sharp and the E. Then P I M, P I M, and doing what it says there. That's a hard line. That for me is harder than what's come before. Definitely needs a bit of looping. Um, Thirteen, obviously, it's the same thing again. So. at the end. Next bit, I think the way this, this is written, obviously it, it needs to be quite light, I think. Still accenting. Ugh. I'm playing that, again, maybe slightly weirdly, with MA going to I. So MA on the chords, I on the open B. A hammer on. Okay, I quite like that. It's it's going from a st strong beat to uh, the weak beat. So so if we're looking at accenting beat four and six, that bar, that's nice. I like it. Um, bar twenty one, the last line of the page. C sharp in bar 21, 4 and 1, that's what I'm doing, 2 again. Okay, I like that. And then treat bar 22 as an E major chord with a with the, with the sus 4 for the A. So um, I would go second finger on the B on the 5th string, uh, third finger on the E, and then fourth finger on the A, going to first finger on the G sharp. Bar, a bit fiddly. Remember to keep that B on in the bass and the F sharp. And I think at the end of that bar, I'm yeah, I think I'm muting the A in the bass with my middle, uh, my little finger, just doing that rather than the thumb because the thumb's quite busy in that bar. So there is the option of using your little finger to mute there. You don't really want that A over ringing, even if it's for a quaver until the B comes on. It's just a bit messy. Uh, Pont, next page. Really try and make this punchy. I, I cut the crotchet short to give it a bit of punch with the ponticello. Then 
this weird D. I think I played that in the performance with my on, uh, fretted. And I would have left the G sharp not to ring on, bad me. So careful of that in bar 28. Um, be much easier to play that open. Um, it, just, it just sticks out a bit to me. A phrase, but I don't know if it's necessary. Anyway, it's there. Let's do it. So, um, so this the, the the next line bar twenty nine onwards feels really kind of like a a, a nice um, kind of soaring to the clouds kind of feeling. It's way lighter and, and feels much more carefree. I am doing pull-offs, I think, on bar 29, on the D to the C sharp at the end. Again, it, it's preserving that accent on beat 6. I prefer it to not doing a slur. See what you feel? Of course you don't have to do that, but it's there. So there are my first and second finger are staying on for the whole line there. Dancing around this A shape. Okay. Um, bar 33. So this is kind of emulating um, bar 17 onwards, this section. And considering in bar 17, the B is muted each time, I feel like we should do that with the bass note here to keep it similarly light. So not going... tightness is lost, I'm really liking only letting that A ring on for a quaver. And then it bursts forward there, so we've got this nice interplay of it being tight. Uh, So putting that, that the thumb on the bass string is nice, I feel, there, from bar 33. Um, I'm in, yeah, I, I often get mixed up with the fingering in bar 35. So I end up often playing kind of an inverse pattern there. To avoid that, just make sure you jump your second finger from the C sharp in the previous bar to the A there. I find that hard. And that in that case you could also jump that to the C sharp and do a do this D with the third finger. I am doing a slur there again. Um, it's there if you want to do it. I think I made that a bit pon Potticello the, the second time round in bar 37. It's a really nice phrase. Uh, and then back in to the start of the page. Um, yeah, so you know, we've gone through the first page, I won't, I won't do much more than that. I, I don't really vary it that much. I think it's, it doesn't need to be really this dance. Um, and the ending. Um, probably the fingering can be whatever you want there. Like, uh, yeah, that's, that's not not a tricky part for this level. Um, obviously, just remember. Sometimes I see that to code right at the end of the page, turn over, and because it's the same as bar twenty five, I'm. Um, I end up going in this eternal loop, so make sure you do hit the coda at that point. Um, yeah, I think that's that's it to say about this piece. Really, again, like it, listen, really might be helpful to listen to some of these dances. Um, there, there are a few on YouTube um, to get a feel 
for the music and yeah keep it really tight and rhythmical and, and um, I think the biggest thing that helps with this piece is those stresses. <laughs> shape everything they, they, they kind of bring it all um, tight and easy ish um, so I am offering online lessons via zoom uh, one one-on-one -on -one. Um, I have a few slots available at the time this video is going up um, I also do video responses where you can record a piece like this um, send it to me and I will send a video response back and exercises, PDF of kind of notes and exercises and that kind of thing. So if you are interested, please uh, get in touch in the description below. Uh, thank you very much.